Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to today's How Tuesday webinar. I'm Carl Villacoba, the Communications Director for the Monmouth University Urban Coast Institute in New Jersey and a member of the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Data Portal Development Team. Last month we developed two maps showing the areas of the Coast Guard's New Jersey Seacoast Delaware Bay Port Access Route Study, or PARS, and a proposed anchorage area about eight miles from the mouth of North Carolina's uh, Cape Fear River. Um, we've worked with the Coast Guard this year to develop these and four other maps that you can find in our Coast Guard Proposed Areas and Studies collection in the portal's maritime theme. Um, the Federal Register notices announcing the anchorages and studies also directed people to the portal where they could view interactive versions of the maps in combination with any of the thousands of other data layers on our site. This collaboration has been great for all involved from a public information standpoint. It's given the Coast Guard one more way to get the word out on the important work they're doing, and ocean stakeholders and members of the public a tool to study these areas and submit detailed input to the Coast Guard. Today we're happy to welcome two presenters who've been instrumental in this uh, collaboration, Jerry Barnes and Matt Creelman of the U.S. Coast Guard's 5th District. Matt and Jerry will provide more information on the PARS and Anchorage area, demonstrate the maps, and show how the portal can be used to analyze the sites and inform public comments. A few notes just before we get started. Non-presenters on this webinar are muted by default, so questions and comments can be submitted in the chat box. We will have an open Q&A section at the end, but if you do have an immediate question about something you see, uh, feel free to submit it and we'll try to address it uh, when the time is right on the spot. <clears throat> this webinar is being recorded for the benefit of those who can't be here today. And usually I'll post within a day or two on the portal blog and the webinar archive pages. Um, I, I see a lot of people in the particip participant list who uh, I know know the portal well. Um, but for those who may be new to it, I'd like to just provide some brief background. So the ocean is a busy place, and that's especially true here in the Mid-Atlantic, where we, you've got uh, some of the, the East Coast's busiest ports. You've got ferry traffic coming to and from the cities and, uh, you know, across from Delaware to Cape May. You've got uh, a, a vibrant com commercial fishing industry. It's the epicenter of a lot of um, overseas communication cable activity from, uh, you know, uh, New Jersey, New York area down to South America and to Europe and places in between. You've got recreational boating and uh, a, lot, a lot of other things, including offshore wind on the way. And what the, the portal does is help people visualize all of these things taking place at sea and see how they relate to each other and um, in, in some cases how they conflict with one another so that people who are in ocean management roles can make better decisions based on what they see. What's on the portal? Currently about 5,000 different map layers organized under 11 themes including fishing data, marine life, maritime data, oceanography, recreation, and much more. We've got instru um, some instructional and educational resources like a portal blog where you can find out about any significant new data set or tool that we've debuted, uh, an ocean stories section, which is basically our um, educational story map meets digital magazine platform. We've got a calendar where you can find out about webinars like this one and um, conferences that are of interest to people who are portal users, and we host semi-monthly webinars like this one. We've also got some pretty great tools for users to uh, share maps with each other and collaborate in groups on projects. The portal team currently consists of Monmouth University's Urban Coast Institute, where I sit, Rutgers University, the Nature Conservancy, and our developer, EcoTrust, uh, working under the guidance of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Council on the Ocean, or MARCO. Oh, skip ahead. For those who might not be familiar, MARCO was established a little over a decade ago by the governors of uh, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia 
to collaborate on ocean issues. And the current chair is Keisha Santiago Martinez of New York State. Now, finally, before I turn it over to Matt and Jerry, I think this seems like an appropriate time to announce our latest data edition, uh, AIS vessel traffic maps for 2018 and 19, which are now on the portal. These maps were developed in collaboration with our partners from the Marine Cadaster, which obtained the data from the Coast Guard and processed it for regional partners, partners like ourselves. So we thank not only the Marine Cadaster and the Coast Guard, but also our colleagues on the Northeast Portal team, which took the lead in developing uh, the maps by vessel type and sharing them for us. Um, the AIS maps are consistently among the highest, uh, most used on the portal. And we, got, we now have data going back to 2011. Uh, we've posted both annual and monthly maps for all vessels carrying AIS technology, cargo, fishing, and passenger vessels, pleasure craft and, and sailboats, tankers, tugs and tows, and other vessels that don't quite fit within these classifications. You can use our slider tool to toggle through the monthly maps or even click a button to animate them automatically. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry and Matt but feel free to ask me any questions you have in the chat about the portal or contact me from uh, on the email that's on the portal or uh, the comments form that you can find um, on the bottom of the portal at any time, and I'll try to get back to you very quickly. And Jerry. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jerry Barnes, and with me I have Matt Krillman, and we are Marine Planners and Ace Navigation Program Managers in the blustery and rainy city of Portsmouth, Virginia. And uh, Carl, I want to thank you for hosting us today, and I want to thank all of you for being with us today. First up, we're going to discuss the Port Access Route Study for the seacoast of New Jersey and interest of Delaware Bay. But before that, I kind of want to talk about the background and the purpose of Port Access Route Studies and uh, uh, why we're doing what we're doing. So the Coast Guard may designate fairways and traffic separation schemes and to provide safe access routes for vessels proceeding to U.S. ports. And uh, here in the U.S. economy, U.S. ports is a major driver, and it's how we get the majority of the goods that uh, we use every day in our lives. Uh, why is this important? The designation of fairways and of traffic separation schemes recognizes the paramount right of navigation over all other uses in the designated areas. And today, I, I think we're in a very uh, kind of a historic time period with really the dawn of renewable energy on the Atlantic uh, Outer Continental Shelf. So before we establish a, a fairways or a traffic separation scheme, the Coast Guard has to do a study. And we do a study through a lot of collaboration um, with our federal state partners and with you, the, the public and the maritime stakeholders. You know, the primary purpose of this coordination is kind of like Carl said, is the ocean is a really busy place. Um, just offshore Delaware Bay, there's lots of anchoring, lightering, uh, all types of tug and tow traffic, fishing vessel activities. Um, and so this coordination is to ensure that we understand the environment as we move forward in our study. So what is the purpose of the study? The purpose is to determine if we need to uh, impose or design vessel routing measures. Routing measures may be necessary anyways in areas where our density of traffic is, is uh, restricted uh, or the density is high but their maneuvering room is restricted or we have obstructions such as the, the various um, proposed wind farms. Uh, and examples of routing measure, measures include two-way routes, recommended tracks, deep water routes, cautionary areas, and areas to be avoided by certain traffic. Our last study of the New Jersey seacoast and Delaware Bay occurred in 1994, and the results were published in 1995. 
The study was conducted in response to a number of near collisions and at least one collision between an outbound tug and barge and an inbound deep draft ship in the eastern approach lane of the traffic separation scheme. The study showed that navigation safety, economic, and environmental considerations necessitated amending the TSS to better separate large inbound vessels from tug and barge traffic transiting easterly and northerly, northerly routes um, along the New Jersey coastal coast. In the old configuration, near misses occurred frequently. Um, and in response to this, we proposed, the Coast Guard proposed to the International Maritime Organization that the eastern approach TSS be adjusted, that the two-way traffic route for tug and barge traffic entering the departing Delaware Bay be established, and that the precautionary area be reconfigured. IMO adopted and implemented our, our recommendations in 1996, and through the rulemaking process, um, they were published in 2000. I want to draw your attention to your screen. Under the file share, you'll see a How Tuesday webinar links PDF. If you download that, all of the Federal Register notices that uh, we refer to in our slides, um, you, there are links there that will point you directly to them. So that was in 1994-95. More recently, really at the dawn of the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management and renewable energy um, considerations on the Atlantic seaboard, the Coast Guard conducted a multi-year study uh, from 2011 really to about 2016 where they looked at all the AIS data that, was, that existed at the time uh, and looked at the north-south routes typically taken by primarily tug and barge traffic and the deep draft ship that operates coastwise. In addition to that, uh, we looked at existing marine planning guidelines that were used elsewhere in the world, and we developed uh, marine planning guidelines in use for the Coast Guard that was published via Navigational Vessel Inspection Circular and a Commandant Instruction. But the primary results of this multi-year study that it concluded that shipping safety fairways along the eastern seaboard connecting uh, or the various ports in the north and south directions was appropriate. This graphic may be a little hard to read and it, um, it's a little out of focus, but on the left of your screen, you see all the activity that uh, is in progress in regards to site characterization activities by wind farm developers or additional areas that are under consideration for leasing um, by the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. In the middle of your screen is really the recommendations of the Atlantic Coast Port Access Route Study. You'll see the, the green lines are, are pretty much the north-south um, navigation quarters that are currently being used by deep draft vessels. And then you'll see uh, inboard of that with the, the gold or the yellow, primarily your tug and barge traffic routes. The shipping safety fairway system, the Coast Guard intends to follow the rulemaking process, uh, hopefully in the coming months, uh, to, to seek public input uh, as we move forward to implementing these safety fairways. And just on the right of your screen is really the, the highlight, the tug and barge traffic as it re, uh, relates to the entrance to the Delaware Bay. So that's the north-south uh, navigation corridors that are currently in use in the Coast Guard's uh, proposal to move forward. In 2019, the Coast Guard announced a new study of routes used by ships to access ports on the Atlantic coast. This new study supplements the ACPARS, you know, which concentrated on north-south, and it really is looking at the east-west traffic. And in 2019, uh, the Director of Marine Transportation for the Coast Guard asked the various district commanders uh, on the eastern seaboard, that's the first district uh, out of Boston, the fifth district out of Portsmouth, Virginia, and the seventh district out of uh, Miami, Florida, to, pro to examine their ports based on their economic significance or their uh, military significance and to prioritize a schedule 
uh, these supplemental studies. And in the Mid-Atlantic, we have three concurrently in progress. We have a port access route study looking at the entrance of Chesapeake Bay, uh, and it covers Virginia and it deeps uh, the northern part of North Carolina, and it covers up to uh, pretty much close to the Maryland-Virginia uh, line. We have a port access route study that covers the entrance to Cape Fear River and uh, Moorhead City, North Carolina, and the seacoast of North Carolina. And then we really have the one that brings us to you today, and that is the New Jersey seacoast and Delaware Bay. We published in the Federal Register a notice seeking public comment on the study on May 5th. Uh, similar to the ACT PARS, we'll follow the same process. We'll look at AIS vessel data. Uh, we'll look at information from our stakeholders uh, and really trying to identify potential conflicts and other activities that are happening offshore and to see if we can uh, need to devise a system to, um, for the safety of navigation. We anticipate the study really taking 12 months or more to complete. As briefly mentioned, the study will be conducted in accordance with the Commandant instruction, which you can read via the, the links that the, on the How to See webinar links. And that common instruction includes the marine planning guidelines that were developed during the ACPARS. So the, the comment period covers two months. And during the first month, uh, we asked if, if people wanted to have um, public meetings. We anticipate, we, there's been numerous requests to have public meetings. So in the coming months, we're going to advertise again in the Federal Register notice we will hold public meetings. It is possibly that they will be virtual meetings. Uh, and so this comment period, if you want to look at it, what it does for our study, it really is providing, informs the Coast Guard of what potential conflicts we need to examine as we begin diving into the AIS um, uh, data and to look at uh, routing measures. You know, similar to the 1994-95 uh, study, it may lead to changes or it may not. We, we don't know. And if it does lead to changes, there are uh, some of those changes we can implement uh, here without going to the IMO. But if we're going to address or modify the traffic separation scheme, then that does have to go to the IMO um, for their review and approval. So how can you participate? I've already uh, touched on it um, briefly. But uh, at the end of this, we'll give you uh, the docket number, uh, and you really need to add comments to us through regulations.gov. But what we're asking for specifically, uh, address impacts of navigation along the seacoast of New Jersey and the approaches to Delaware Bay, resulting from factors such as planned or potential offshore development, including wind turbine placements and transmission quarters, Current port capacities, plan improvements, increased vessel traffic, change, increased vessel traffic, changing vessel patterns, weather conditions, potential conflicts or disruptions in uncharted or informal anchorage areas or navigational difficulty. So as Carl mentioned, uh, through some of the recent federal no notices, including the New Jersey PARS, we've partnered with Marco. We are pointing the public to the data portal in the Federal Register Notice. We are holding these webinars. Uh, the data portal is just a fabulous tool for maritime stakeholders, the public, and for the Coast Guard. Uh, I, I really use it on almost a daily basis uh, to have a quick uh, snapshot of all the activities that's occurring out there and where the ships and vessels are moving. So. Look forward. Uh, look for those public notice. Uh, excuse me, the public meetings and notices in the upcoming Federal Register. And with that, hey Jerry, that's, real, yes. real quick, um, on that note, there was a question that was popped in um, from Edward LeBlanc, who asks, "Will the Coast Guard extend the, com the comment period for a sufficient time beyond the public meetings?" Uh, Mr. LeBlanc, we the purpose of the public 
meeting is really to answer questions and provide another opportunity to receive um, input orally. Uh, I do anticipate that we'll open the comment period to coincide again to coincide with those public meetings to to uh, also accept writ written comments as well. With that, I'm going to try to exit out of here and let Matt do his magic. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Creelman. Again, I'm a marine planner here at uh, the Coast Guard's 5th District. And what you're seeing on your screen now, I hope, um, is what we're looking at for our, our size of our area for the uh, New Jersey, Delaware Bay um, port access route study. And, uh, and I'll point your attention here to this, this northern boundary. This is actually the boundary line between the northern half and the northern part of the Coast Guard's 5th District and where the Coast Guard's 1st District uh, comes into play. So we get up in here in the New York Bight area and we're kind of, it's mostly 1st District, but it can be some of ours, but that's how we came up with the line uh, for that. And then the, south and the southern border actually ties in with the northern part of the Chesapeake Bay uh, entrance uh, port access route study. So that's how we came up with the uh, with, with the area. Uh, and then of course the eastern part is just how far out uh, the district boundary goes. So we're kind of looking at that. District 1 is looking at a, a port access route study for that New York Bight area and they're taking the lead on that. So we're kind of tag teaming as we go. So now I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit and we'll have, play around with the portal a little bit as we go. All right, so how do you get into the Delaware Bay? I think I'm in a little too close. Now there's two traffic separation schemes that come into this, one here on the north, and there's one that goes to the southeast to come in. And if you look on there, I'm using the 2018 just because it's brand new and it's really cool and it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, but we'll set up 2018 in January with cargo ships, right, coming in and out, and we'll see how that works get it to turn on. There it is. All right, so as you can see, you know, we have some that run the, the, the traffic separation scheme to the north. Primarily, they come in from the southeast, and you can see very distinctly where the traffic separation schemes end, right? And I'll scroll down here, and we'll look at the northern part once it catches up with me. The traffic separation scheme coming out of New York ends right about here and things fan out, right? So we knew about that. It kind of ties in with the north-south study. But what we want to do now is draw back a little bit and go, these vessels coming in, again, I'm just using one month of data right now um, as soon as it catches up. I talk faster than the computer goes, I'm sorry. Right. We're taking a look at these routes and these routes out in here to say, oh, okay, do we need something that's going to tie into this backbone route? Do we need something further east or have we made sure that what's coming out of the Delaware Bay has clear access to these proposed or not quite proposed but the thought about uh, fairways as they come out? So that's what we mean by east-west uh, route routing measures. The AC PARS did our backbone north-south, and so now we're looking at do we need to put in something into play to ensure uh, these vessels have clear access east and west from the overseas area as we go, right? So that's kind of kind of the overview of, of where that is. And again, this is just one quick month worth of data on a cargo vessel, right? But as you see, I'll, and I'll have some fun with this because I, li I like this. Right, you can go through month by month. Uh, this is 2018 and see how the cargo vessels go. And you'll notice that they don't change a whole heck of a lot, right? Run, run this pretty well, pretty standard routes uh, as they go. One thing we do 
that we'll look at as we go. I'm going to get in a little closer. Let me get down into this area here. Let it come back up. It's eventually going to catch up with me. There we go. I'll go in a little bit closer into this area. There. An instructor's worst nightmare, dead air, as we wait for it to catch up. So we go through here and we'll take a look and we'll start to see these little swirls in here, little swirls in here, little swirls in here. That's actually vessels that are anchored. And, and so one of the things that we're looking at as we go through here is, all right, these guys are coming in and anchoring. Well, this right here is a, a wind area. So eventually they're not going to be able to, uh, to anchor there. Where can they go? So that's one thing that that we'll go on and look at. So as we go through month to month, you can see the swirls up in the areas uh, as they go. And you'll see this again down in North Carolina as well, um, getting set through there. So that's one of the items that we'll be looking at is, well, there's some survey work, uh, is where are these vessels uh, going to go? And what can we do to, to help them? Uh, as we go. So that's 2018. Let's see 2019. You'll bet you see if we go cargo vessels, how we get there. Again, waiting for it to catch up. Bandwidth. I love bandwidth. Use a lot of it. It looks like you have that layer muted. Is that right? Circle. Yeah, the little circle needs to be filled in. There you go. That's it. I'm working with a different mouse. So I... Thank you, sir. That'll help. All right, so now we're looking at uh, January cargo vessels of 2019. Okay, some survey work going on there, but you can see some, some anchoring going on here, some anchoring going on there uh, as we go through. But what's happening with our fishing vessels, right? And we'll zoom back out and get a good look at the whole thing. So 2019 with our fishing vessels. One more there. Where were they going? And we'll want to wait. It's stuck at 17%, isn't it? Yeah, those monthly sliders take a couple of seconds to load sometimes because there's just yeah, so much data. Yeah, they do. They, they do. But if it's really stuck, you can always hit the refresh. But I don't, I don't, I don't want you to lose all of your uh, good stuff either. Oh, we're good. If it, if it drops off, I can, I can rebuild it as fast as the computer will let me. We may just be frozen on this, uh, on this laptop. There you go. Now i got to rebuild it. Oh, give it a second. I'll give it a second. Patience is not I'm my middle like name. With a uh, couple of questions have built up in the queue, so um, I can read, read sure, some of ahead. those off while, while you're loading. Um, is there a more specific timeline available for ECPAR's next steps? Will next steps require um, IMO approval as noted for upcoming studies? And that's from Julia Lewis. So this is Jerry again. I wish I had a firm timeline for the next steps for the ACPARS. Uh, the Coast Guard fully uh, intends on initiating the rulemaking process with first going out the door with advance notice of proposed rulemaking 
um, and that's in the review process. Hopefully, uh, I can tell you that we're committed to it and we're doing these supplemental studies. At the end of the day, they're all going to tie in together, but no, I don't have a firm timeline. And with regards to engage in the IMO, uh, if we modify a TSS, I know that it has to go to the IMO. In regards to safety fairways or navigational corridors, um, I, I don't have a firm response to that. I know that will be led by the uh, Director of Marine Transportation System at Coast Guard Headquarters. Okay, we have a second question here from Michelle Desatels. Um, can you use the, ch the chart as a base map? Uh, I'm not sure if that was meant for that one specific moment when you were looking at it. Um, so it is, a, yeah. it is certainly an option on the portal. You can do that. And there's also, Matt hasn't shown up, but there's a, you know, routing measures tab that you can open up that will show you know, the precautionary areas and the TSS and the two-way traffic, tug and barge traffic headed into Delaware Bay. Mm -hmm. the, the, the layers are really uh, pretty neat to play around with. Um, another question from Matt from Tom Vinson. You, referen you referenced the first district will be doing a parse for the New York site. I don't recall that having been publicly noticed yet. Has it been, and if not, any idea on the timing? So we work uh, frequently with the, our first district counterparts, and they intend to conduct uh, port access route studies for the, new, the northern New York bite area. Uh, and I, I think you should see a notice of study in the coming months, if not weeks. All right, I'm back pretty much. Okay. And so yeah, I, I, I've got it, got it back now. I just changed up what I was going to do a, a little bit, and uh, hopefully I won't go too terribly fast through this uh, to get it caught off guard. All right, so there's fishing vessel data from 2019 and all, and all of it. Um, to answer Michelle's question, yeah, you can go on and you can pull up nautical charts and overlay things on a nautical chart. Uh, this particular view doesn't lend itself very well on a, uh, on, on a nautical chart, but you can zoom in and get into the nautical charts. So this is fishing vessel data from 2019, all right, all, all of 2019, and you can see three distinct areas here on the Jersey coast that our fishermen come out of. I believe that's Tom's River. Forgive me if I don't get New Jersey right, um, but I'm, I'm learning it. I think that's Tom's River, Atlantic City, and Cape May. And you can see them fan out as they go with one gargantuan corridor from Tom's River south. And then these guys coming out down here, fishing these areas all along here. So this is one that we kind of look at and go, okay, this is, primarily where, where they're going and how they're getting there. And so this would be a corridor, right? And I, could, I, think, I can pretty well say that it's coming out of there. That's the primary route that the fishermen out of Tom's River use to go down and fish to the south or fish down in this area. And you can see this, the spokes lay, splay out from Atlantic City as well, right? So one thing that we're going to be looking at is Okay, here's some, here's some data here. Uh, let's see, I'll go at the fishing vessels. What about cargo vessels from 2019? Where are they going? Well, they got a pretty good route down here, right? And you can kind of see that route as they go. So turning off that cargo, turning back on the um, fishing vessel, this is an area of concern for us because what does it go through? It goes right through a, a wind development area. Okay, is it, is it a showstopper? No, it's just an area of concern that we need to go back and look at. And so we're kind of using this to kind of get into uh, figuring out where we need to really get in and get a good hard look uh, to make sure things remain safe and viable for, for the mariners 
uh, as they go. All right. And I don't know if folks saw how I was flipping back and forth between the active and the data, but you can go grab all your stuff uh, over here. I'll throw up the, uh, uh, or I'll put up the 2018, let's go fishing vessels and cargo vessels. We'll grab both of those. It should pop up over here in just a minute. 18, oh, missed it. Turn these guys off. All right, so now we can go through, and this is kind of how we, we use the portal here. So I'll turn off the, uh, I gotta turn off the cargo vessel. So there's 2018 for fishing vessels. Now I need to grab the 2019. There we go. All right, so you can kind of toggle back and forth. There's See if anything changes over over a year. So I'll turn off the maybe trying to turn you off. Well, I'll turn off that one. All right. So there's 2019. Let's see if anything changes from 2019 to 2018. So there's 2019. Let's turn you off. You're killing me. There we go. 2019. So things pretty well stay the same. So this is a corridor that, you know, something that we, that we have to look at. This is kind of how we use um, the data portal going through. And we can grab it all the way back. If you look into the data section here, I can go back and I can grab um, fishing vessels. No, no, can't grab fishing vessels. But I can look at cargo vessels and tank vessels. Okay, primary users of the Delaware Bay all the way back to 2011. So we'll kind of use that as a conglomerate to go through and, uh, and make sure that we've got some, some good data behind us as we're looking at uh, these, these route studies. I think that pretty well covers everything on there. That's the New Jersey area. So before we move on, I, I do see another question about have we talked to fishermen uh, about how they use IAS on their fishing vessels? Are they required to have it on all ways? Do they ever shut up, shut it off? Are you expecting that input to be obtained during public comment? Uh, so we have a variety of ways to um, get, get a, a good idea of the fishing vessel routes. Uh, and where uh, they are fishing. You, you saw there was really good coverage there on the data portal to see their, you know, the, their routes from the seaports out to their fishing grounds. There's also um, you know, data about their catch and the vessel management systems that some of the vessels are required to have. Um, but we also, the, the fishing vessel communities in New Jersey and New York and New England are very engaged in this process, um, and I, I think we have good communications with them through this study. In addition, the, just to do on a parallel uh, angle, is the various wind farm companies are doing their outreach, and uh, I think the, the fishing communities are, are very well engaged for both the Coast Guard and the wind farm developers individually. And with that, I, let me see. So well, let me touch base on, before I move on, there's something that the Coast Guard, when we're doing our study, uh, we have the ability to segregate or segregate the traffic uh, in greater detail than what is shown on the portal. We actually will look at, in addition to various vessel types, we will segment it by draft, um, to see if, if vessels of different drafts are taking different routes. 
So we have the U.S. Coast Guard Navigational Center that really is going to help us. You know, we can identify, you know, cruise ships, passenger ships, container ships, bulkers, coal carriers. Uh, we, we just we, we can get really granular in where the, the Pacific ships are are navigating. It takes a lot of computer power and time, um, and we're getting smarter as we go. But yes, we have the capacity and the capabilities to, to get very granular. So with that, is there any, any more questions on the Port Access Route Study? And we can open it up for more at the end. Okay, so moving on to Cape Fear River Approach Anchorage. You know, you know, the Ports and Waterway Safety Act gives us the authority to designate ship safety fairways and do the studies. You know, the Coast Guard also has the authority to des designate formal anchorage grounds for the purpose of navigation safety. Um, up until uh, recently, our authority was only covered out to three nautical miles from shore. But with the Coast Guard Authorization Act of 2010, uh, 33 SC 471 was amended, and we now have the authority to establish anchorage grounds out to 12 nautical miles. And shortly you'll see why that's important when we get to Lock um, Lockwood Follies Explosive Anchorage. We, you know, there's a lot of activity with wind farms up in New England and the Mid-Atlantic, and over time that's going to continue to grow and move south. Uh, offshore, the North Carolina, South Carolina, there are um, the Long Bay call areas. There are areas that uh, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management believes is ripe for uh, renewable energy development. And so with that, looking at water space issues, the Coast Guard has, uh, we, we want to ask the question of whether or not we need, need to establish a formal anchorage ground. Cape River, just like all of our ports along the eastern seaport, supports a growing and diverse marine transportation system. Kind of unique to the Cape Fear River, it also has the military ocean terminal Sunny Point, which really is um, one of the primary um, ammunition uh, terminals that really supports our DOD forces worldwide. To in a to help with the expanding and the growing port down there, the U.S. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers is conducting a study considering the need to deepen the existing federal navigation channel, extending the ocean entrance channel farther offshore, and widening channels in the Cape Fear River because the ship sizes, both the links and the drafts, are continuing to uh, increase at a very high rate. As I previously mentioned, offshore wind is really an exciting time. And uh, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management is taking a regional approach to looking at all the areas that has the potential for renewable energy development based on a variety of factors. You know, so what happens down on the Cape Fear River? You know, similar to Delaware Bay, they, they anchor outside the traffic separation scheme. And you know, we have concerns that should there be uh, wind energy lease areas there? Should there be development that, whether the loss of the, the water space or the location of the you know, electrical export cables to the onshore grid might displace areas that are traditionally used by ships to anchor? So as before, we seek your comments. Uh, as we try to determine if we need to move forward with a rulemaking process, we are looking for you know, specifically, you know, the notional anchorage ground. Would it accommodate the needs of the marine transportation system? Would it improve navigational safety? Does it facilitate continued growth of the port? And also, does it facilitate, you know, the development of our our uh, renewable energy sources offshore, or is it not necessary and the status quo is sufficient? So I know I haven't shown a graphic of what I'm talking about, but Matt will get to that. But the Lockwood Folly Inlet um, really was created, the, the explosive anchors were created in 1969. 
when our authorities to establish anchorage grounds only went out to three nautical miles. And it, so it's really in close proximity to shore. And based on that, it also has uh, shallow depths between 32 and 37 feet. 1969 in the 70s and 80s, you know, 32, 37 foot uh, was probably pretty ad adequate to uh, accommodate the majority of the coastwise shipping um, traffic. Today, not so much. Uh, we have concerns that the, the location of this anchorage is not sufficient for current uh, vessels and in future vessels. So similar to the, the approach anchorage where, you know, hey, is there, is there still a need for an explosive anchorage in this area? If so, you know, to what extent, what purpose? Can we relocate it? Can we delete it? Yeah. Are there other options that should be considered? One of the options that we have considered is for the Cape Fear River approach anchorage is really to carve off an area of that anchorage that when there is a need, it can be used solely for, the, uh, for vessels carrying explosives. And with that, we'll turn it back to Matt through the portal. All right, now we're going to zoom down the coast. All right, and I'm going to go turn some of these off. All right, so here's our uh, Cape Fear River. And what do I have on? Shouldn't have anything on. I got fishing vessels on. I'm going to turn those fishing vessels off. Maybe. Oh, come on, turn off. There we go. All right, so let's zoom in on the Cape Fear, and we'll go into a nautical chart so we can see things. I can jump in as we go. So if we zoom in, we'll see that we actually have a transportation, or a, <laughs> a TSS, <laughs> a traffic separation scheme, uh, in inbound and outbound for the Cape Fear River. And then this is Lockwood Folly up in this area. Unfortunately, with this, I can't get in close enough to get down to the next chart to show you, but it's generally right about there, all right? So you'll have to believe me, um, but to prove it, I'm going to go, and let me see, not routing measures. Oh, where did it go? I uh, have anchorage areas. We'll turn on our anchorage areas, and you can see it pops up, and that's where the Lockwood's Folly um, explosive anchorage uh, area is. Now, what's all along here? Really, really pretty houses, right? With lots of beach farm, a lot of lot, lots of uh, summer summer vacationers uh, down there and just under three nautical miles uh, off the shore is this explosive anchorage. So one of the things that we wanted to look at, right, was maybe we should, no, I don't want to put that on. As Jerry said, we should look at, come on, putting a anchorage out a little bit further away. Okay, it's, it's coming up. Anchorage. Okay, so here's what we came up with. All right, and I'll back out just a little bit so you can see where where it sits. All right, so we go from just under three. 
to uh, about 10 miles uh, offshore. Right? This area here is what we're proposing as a, a regular anchorage, and then this section over here carved out for the explosives area. Don't worry about the obstruction. When you zoom into the next chart, you find out it's actually outside of the area, right? So why did we choose this area? Right? We'll go through, and that's where our AIS data will come in. And we'll go on that one, and I'm going to look at cargo vessels first. Can you also highlight the wind plan? Yeah, I'll do that in a second. Okay. So as you see, here's cargo vessels in January. Notice the little swirl. Somebody's already anchoring in this area. Here's your pilot boarding area. This is where they're all going to be anchoring. So look for, as I'm just going to toggle through the months, look for all the little spots that are sitting in here and anchoring as we go. Okay, that was one of the reasons why we kind of looked at this area. That's where folks are using it. Right? I'm going to pause and I'll change it to tankers. Go back to January. All right? Tank vessels aren't going to anchor near, near as much. There are a few that come into anchor, but you'll notice that they all anchor generally in this area. All right? Boom. And yeah, so if we go back, you'll notice there was one that actually went up there on a cargo vessel that went up there and anchored in, in Lockwood Folly. So it is still being used, right? The other reason we liked it here, because there's some anchoring as we go all the way out in this area, I'll jump in and turn on the, let me get over there. Wind planning areas, all right? Jump back into the ocean view because it's easier to see. All right, come out a little bit. So here are the the uh, uh, the wind planning areas. This is the Long Bay call area that just just went out. These areas were called out uh, a few years ago uh, and are just kind of kind of sitting here. So you can see there's still a lot of potential development uh, wind-wise down in this area. Um, so as we go through and we'll kind of look at how things go, same, same way as we did with the PARs, we'll take a look at the traffic uh, to make sure that this is still a good area uh, that we want to go to. This is actually where the, the vessels are going uh, to moor or to anchor uh, for the evening for a couple of days, however long it takes to get in there. Um, but also it gets this carved out, won't interfere with the wind energy areas, won't interfere with the traffic separation scheme, uh, keeps things real close to where they're anchoring right now, gets the explosives further offshore, which should facilitate quicker in and out of the Matsu area, is kind of our thought process behind that. Um, and I think that's all I had for for that. Yeah. All right. So that's the summary for our Cape Fear River approach and Lockwood Folly Inlet Explosive Anchorage in uh, our New Jersey Seacoast Port Access Route Study. Um, I just want to open up the last time for are there any additional questions for for either? Yeah, thanks guys. Any any questions you can type them into the chat. Give everybody a minute to catch up. I I also I know it was on my slides, but I, I didn't mention it specifically. On the New Jersey Port Access Route study. You know, we're going to conduct the study and we're going to make some recommendations or at least the study is going to have some recommended measures or the status quo. That will be put out to the public for another opportunity for comment. Um, so if there is any, during that long study process, 
you know, I, I think that we're going to have lots of uh, uh, meetings and discussions, but at the end of the day, there will be a draft study report that's put out for comment before it's finalized. So it's an iterative process, and we look forward to the public participation to make sure that we have all known factors and conflicts identified to determine if there needs to be any type of mitigation measure. Okay, we have a question from Laura Morton who asks, could you tell us how you are coordinating with BOEM on the North Carolina, North Carolina Anchorage study? Sure, so similar to the way that we work with our first district Coast Guard partners, uh, we are coordinating with BOEM, I won't say continuously, but it, it's almost continuously. Uh, we engage them almost on a biweekly standing call, and it's really BOEM's request for us to identify any potential conflicts with the Long Bay call area that led us to come out the door with this notice of inquiry on the Anchorage grounds. So our you know, our notional Anchorage ground is really a response to coordination with Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. Any other questions? So we have a, it indicates that a couple of people are typing, so we'll give it a minute. Edward LeBlanc, do you have a table of coordinates or a digital file of the last longs of the ACPAR's recommended fairways? We, we do, but I they're not releasable at the moment. The best that we can offer is what is um, currently in the Atlantic Coast Port Access Route Study Final Report. Okay, any other questions? It's about 2.58, so we'll, here's one. When planning anchorages, and this is from Ron Larson, when planning anchorages, will you also be considering opportunities for export cable routes to access shore from the offshore wind areas? So I think in all of our activities, both the Coast Guard and the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, we're looking for the best way to deconflict um, competing priorities or competing water space needs. So, and we both have to follow our, you know, the Administrative Procedures Act process as we do that. So, in our study, we we not of our notice, we're seeking public input, but. As there is no, it's not, it is unclear what actually will be um, leased or what interest there will be. So presently, where we are in the Anchorage, um, you know, notional process, we are not considering specific cable export routes. I don't think there's been any type of hydrographic surveys done or that information is there. So essentially, right now, the Coast Guard's desire is to preserve uh, water space for anchoring to meet the port complex needs in the Wilmington and Cape Fear River um, maritime stakeholders. Okay, with the time being 3 o'clock and seeing no other uh, questions, uh, I, I think we'll call it a webinar. And thank you again, Jerry and Matt. That was super informative. And for those who were on the line, um, as I said earlier, I will have a recording of this posted on the portal uh, within a day or two. You can find it on the portal blog page or on the webinar's archive page.
Um, so thanks again uh, for taking the time out to do this. Thank you very much, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, everyone, for, for participating.